Welcome back. I am Dustin. And I'm Leslie. And we're the Wayward Wags. We were full-time RVers for five whole years yep. out on the road doing our thing. And so we're still talking about RV stuff on our channel. Yep. So today's topic, we're going to talk about the 10 things that we will not miss. Not about at all. RV life. Because <laughs> as great and wonderful as RV life is, yeah. we love the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. but there are always things. There's give and takes. Yeah. So we're going to go from the least annoying to the, the most, most annoying. Okay. So we'll start with the thing that really doesn't bother us that much, but still bothers a little bit. I'll, I'll kick it off. Okay. So the first thing, number 10, limited storage space. Yeah. Didn't bother us too much. No. We did the one in, one out thing. So if we got one shirt, one shirt would go out. Yeah. We kind of kept it, but it limited us in what we could have yeah and we kind of hurt ourselves a little by having scout yeah he did take he up took up a storage unit and his stuff <laughs> yeah his stuff took up way more space than he took up <laughs> yeah so that was kind of self-inflicted yeah but it sucks when you you want to get something and you're like but that's a little too big it's a little too bulky where are we gonna store it yeah we're a little too heavy heavy and we're like eh, guess we're not getting it <laughs> yeah so storage was an issue but yeah. It's low on the list. It is very low. All right, what's next? Okay, next would be our mail problems. Yeah, mail is always challenging on the road. We first started with our daughter handling our mail. That was god off. And then sending it to us. <laughs> She's not even good with her own mail. No, she doesn't even check her own mail. Let alone and so we our have mail. missing stuff, late bills. She'd find it months later in the back seat of her car. I mean, I got a birthday card. In like Christmas. Yeah, that was great. And my birthday's in July. When we saw her for Christmas, she's yeah. like, oh, I found this. <laughs> so I, I think it was from my parents. So I had to call my parents and say, I'm sorry, sorry. I never said thank you for this card. I just got it. Got it. Yeah. At Christmas time. <laughs> but then we went to escapees. Yeah, that was a little better. It was. You still got a delay and you got to wait to get your stuff. From it has to go to them and it has to go to you where you're at. So yeah, we used Amazon lockers a lot. I did like Amazon lockers for the yeah. Amazon part. And a lot of the RV parks are very accommodating and they'll let you send stuff, but then it's a timing issue. It, it is. I think we only really felt the hurt of the mail at the very end. Yeah, honestly, because there were some things, legal documents. Yeah, titles that the bank had to send to your physical address they couldn't send it anywhere else so therefore yeah. it had to go to florida then get rerouted to texas and then to us such a pain and when you're waiting for important stuff that's like excruciating yeah so that that's the mail problem yeah but it wasn't terrible it wasn't terrible yeah uh, the next thing on the list is medical care that was a bigger deal for me way bigger deal than for it was you. for you i have more issues than leslie has <laughs> And I need specialty care. And specialty care on the road is just difficult. And my oh prescriptions my were fine because the yeah. VA, VA would send just them to me those. in the mail. Yeah. But uh, going to a doctor, going to a chiropractor, mm -hmm. going to a specialist, you got to go see your primary, then you got to get a referral, mm -hmm. then you got to wait, then you got to get the appointment, then you got to wait for their availability. And then by that time, you're like moving. And there was a time. Or we had to, or we had to just stay. stay in a place we didn't really want to stay. We had to do that in Florida for an extended period because I had yeah. a medical issue. So that was kind of puts a, a, a hindrance on your well, whole and everything. That one Christmas we spent the whole month of December in yeah. Vegas. Yeah. And you needed specialty care urgently. And they couldn't accommodate. I had but to go they to Texas. they said Fort Worth could accommodate. So yeah. we packed everything up and hauled butt to Fort Worth. So sometimes medical care dictated our travels. It did. Which was not cool. That's not cool. Because that's no. not where we wanted to be at the time we wanted to <laughs> no. be there. Was Nothing it? against Fort Worth, but we just didn't want to be there at the time. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. What's next? next would be, and this might sound so petty stupid. It probably is going to sound petty. <laughs> but it just was a little bit annoying. Yeah. And that was having to make ice. And the reason we had to make ice was because the ice makers in RVs are not great. If you hook up yeah. the ice maker line, it's probably going to come undone. It's probably going to leak. Which uh, we've experienced in the first RV. We experienced in our Montana fifth yeah. wheel. And then Alliance doesn't even hook theirs up. No. And they're like, if you hook it up, it's on you. Well, it, it not voids your it warranty. Yeah. Because we know that it's going to bust loose. It's going to leak. You're going to have issues. But... And we're not fixing it. And so we never hooked ours up. No. So we got an ice aftermarket ice maker. Mm -hmm. And we put on the counter and make ice and it just didn't make a lot of ice 
very fast, and I go through ice a lot. I was just about to say why it, it was it made this list because I yeah. wanted it on there. I'm going through ice right now because he uses so much ice. It's I insane. Do. I was making ice all the time, and that's yeah. not convenient because when you got to fill up your whole bin in your ice maker, it takes a while. It does to make that much ice yeah. for you to be out of ice in like. Three days. Yeah. And I had to make more. I spent half a day making ice. It just, it was annoying. I was like, oh my God. So that one's a little petty. Yeah, but, it's petty, but it was an annoyance that I'm not going to miss. We're working our way up to the to the most annoying. So we're almost halfway there. The next yeah. one is for me. It was a really <laughs> bigger deal for me. was the electricity dance. Yeah. And I call it the electricity dance because sometimes you'll be on 50 amp, sometimes you'll be on 30 amp. Yeah. And you got all these appliances. You got washers, dryers, you got air fryers. You got air conditioners. We had high voltage stuff. Yeah, we want to use all of our stuff at the yeah. same time. And if you don't turn yeah, we're one, bougie. We like know, to run yeah. it all at the same time. So there were times where like we're trying to cook one thing in the microwave, one thing in the air fryer, <laughs> and then you got an air conditioner on, then the second air conditioner kicks on, and it's like boom. Yeah, you shut forget it down. To, if you forget to turn off every yeah. air conditioner, but that one. And the and the really annoying part was <laughs> you'd be like in mid cook. Yes, and, you're, and like, you're not paying attention to how much time you're is like, left. How on much stuff. time was on the air fryer? Still. When the breaker flips, and you're like, <laughs> I don't even know how much time to put back on this That's thing. The, yeah. So that was super annoying. And if you think after one or two times we would learn, we but didn't no, know. we didn't. It just was not always on our mind to shut everything else off until doom, until it hit, and then the <laughs> colorful language would ensue. Yeah, and I'm like, what the god. <laughs> if you look at your food, you're like, I don't know what to cook it on. So then we just go eat out. <laughs> Which the problem is, we're not good at cooking anyway, so yeah. that's a problem we didn't need. <laughs> yeah, just made me hate cooking more, honestly. <laughs> All right, the next one was a bigger deal for you. Yeah, I'll let you talk about that. What's next? That the next one's water pressure. Yeah. I was never satisfied with water pressure. Few a few parks yeah. had great pressure. We didn't even need the regulator. Yeah. And it was great. And I'm like, oh, we might need to live here because I'm having <laughs> phenomenal showers. <laughs> For the most part, water pressure was terrible. It, it yeah. No matter where you go. And On no matter average, what yeah. nozzle you buy, you can buy those high speed ones that increase your and pressure. And we tried and a bunch of different stuff. ones. But it's just never going to be like it is in a house. Yeah. And I honestly think there's more parks now regulating their... I think they are regulating before it even gets, gets to the spigot. To, yeah. So then when you're trying to yeah. regulate, it's just... It's even worse. So that was not as bad for me. I mean, it was annoying. But for you, you got to wash your hair. Yes. So you should I, be in there for, forever. Well, yeah. For women in general. And yeah, my hair is fake. So... So she like, does have real hair. But I do hair. have real hair and it's shoulder length. <laughs> but it's like for women in general, it's washing it, conditioning it. You got to yeah. let the conditioner sit for a little bit, you know, and then rinse it out good. So, yeah, you're like, yeah. I want high pressure. Get it out faster and get out of the shower faster. Yeah. It just sucked. So the next one mm-hmm. is more for me. Yeah. And that's dumping tanks. Yeah. Oh, dumping tanks. So annoying. Yeah. It's not fun. Um, the weather's not always great outside. It has to be done so often. For us, it was often because we are not good. Well, we dumped the black tank once a week. Whether yeah, we the black it tank or not. was fine. But the gray the, tank, the gray tank. We always kept it closed. So then sometimes you would forget. Yeah. And whoever was in the shower <laughs> sure. and it's starting to hey, hey 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 open the valve go open the valve <laughs> I'm about to take a bath. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was that was that yeah. Was, it just seems like we every. Two and a half going into three days. Yeah. We had to dump. We had to remind each other. Did you dump tanks? Yeah. I got to dump tanks. I got to dump tanks. Sometimes you forget. You're like, when did we dump last? I don't know. I don't know. And if you didn't know, then you just go ahead and dump before you shower. So, but the black tanks we dumped once a week, whether I needed it or not. Or on a travel day, we would dump and and flush the black tank. But it's not a quick thing. No, it's time consuming too. So that took some time. And sometimes it's cold. Sometimes it's raining. And it's just, man, you're out there just like. I don't want to be doing this right now. Or when you're in Florida and it's blistering hot. Ugh, you're just cooking. Yeah. You like need a shower after you've dumped your tank. And if you're cooking, <laughs> guess what else is cooking? Yeah, yeah. All the contents of your black tank. Yeah. So it smells great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Love that Florida heat. All right. We're almost to the worst. We're getting, we're we're getting into, the worst. Yeah, into the bad We got our, bad our worst three coming up. Yeah. So 
Number the bronze medal goes to travel days and travel planning. I did enjoy traveling. (laughs) The the getting to and from. I liked go I liked being where we were. Yes. And seeing new things and, and exploring and meeting new friends and all that stuff. But the actual act of traveling, not a fact. Yeah. It just, you dreaded it. You always wanted it to be over the minute you got yeah. in the car. <laughs> and we did short travel days compared to most people. We did yeah, short travel we did. days. Three, four hours at the most. Yeah, four was like an exhausting day for us. Yeah, 250 miles. Tried to take keep it under a, a tank of gas. Yeah. But even that, I was like, oh, I don't yeah. even, oh. I just didn't look forward to it. No. Because of all the teardown, all the setup, the, the tank dumping, um, if you forget something, you'll break something. Yeah. I mean, it's just a stressful it was stressful. Thing. No, I think no matter how long you're doing it, yeah, it should be stressful. Because if you get too relaxed and confident, that's when you break more stuff. Well, not only that, let's go to the tra- travel planning portion planning. of that. We were planners. We stayed way ahead. We'd book yes. six, eight months in advance. And then sometimes things would happen. We'd have a family emergency or something would come up. Or your daughter's going to have a baby when you're going to, when you plan to be on the West yeah. Coast. <laughs> so because we were such planners... We had to go undo all that yeah, and then replan. So it's like double the work. And then sometimes you lose a little money. Yeah. There were some that were one night charges, yeah. you know, unfortunately. But, yeah, just sitting in front of that computer trying to figure out. Yeah. Like, okay, we need to be here by this date and we're gonna we're here. So let's go ahead and map it all out. That was exhausting. And the only thing halfway, it cost $90 a night. <laughs> So what are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. You got to go a different way. And we we were not harvest hosters. Not really. Until no, the very toward, end. Toward the end we did. Yeah. And we didn't do, you no know, we had no boondocking because we weren't no. set up for that till the very end of our travels. We weren't too. like Cracker Barrel, Walmart. We did Walmart one time. Twice, I mean, actually. Twice. Yeah, yeah, but we, we weren't big fans no, of that not stuff. A fan. So the stress of all that, not going to miss that. Not at all. Yeah. No. What All right, runner-up. Runner-up. Second worst. <laughs> Backing in. <laughs> you knew it was going to be on the list. I know you knew it was yeah, going to be on the list. Yeah, if you watched us for any length of time, you would know that's yeah. on there. Oh, man. Backing in to sp- spots was just... For me, it's probably the worst. Yeah. Um, You'd rather travel, obviously, according to our list. We'd yeah. rather travel than back into a spot. Yeah. Be- and, well, the problem is... <laughs> Is I wasn't looking forward to the travel in the first place, and then at the very end of the crappy travel, you gotta back I got to back into a space. Yeah, and then if you want to pull through, you generally got to pay more. Pay more, yeah. which I would we we would we pay, pay more. We did a lot if yeah. we could, and some spots just they just don't have pull yeah. throughs. They yeah, just have back ends. A lot of the thousand trails it just is back in only. So then yeah. you try to find one that's herringbone on your driver's side. Because backing in on on the passenger side or on oh, the blind yeah. side was the worst. Or 90 degrees. Or no 90 degrees. What. It's yeah. just horrible. Um, I don't think they should make back-in spots. I know. Unless you're, like, under a certain amount of feet. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're over a certain, it shouldn't even have to do it. What was even worse is if you're going to a space and it's just, like, it's just an overnight or a couple nights to get to the next one, and all they had was back in space. You're, you're yeah. doing all that just to stay for one, one night. night, and you're like, yeah. oh my gosh, it just stressed us out. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, hated. hated that's mine. It. Yeah, I got better at it. Still didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, all never right. liked it. And the worst <sighs> part of RV life for us. Yes. And I think it goes for most people right now, too. I think so, too. It's very high on... If it's not number one on your list, it's it's high up there because a lot of people talk about it lately. Yeah. Over the past year, I'd say. So what is it? And that is our terrible roads. Everywhere. Across as a nation. Everywhere. Now, there's some that are really, really worse than others, but in general, they're just not good. Yeah. I mean, the, the states are not taking care of their roads. I mean... As well as they should. It's just junk. And when you invest this much money mm-hmm. in an RV, and especially if it's your house like it was exactly. for us, it scares the crap out of you because you hit these bumps. You don't really notice it in your passenger car yeah. too much because you got good shocks and you're just kind of yeah. bouncing and floating, floating along. But when you have your house attached to you 
and it and you hit those ruts and it just wham and it just yeah. hits you or there's just a a, a hole a hole we've hit yeah there's no and you can't a, avoid it. It's a trench across yeah, the, the whole, whole lane. Thing. I mean, you're just, you're not going anywhere. You see it, and then you just you just you brace. brace. You're like, hmm. oh god, <laughs> boom. I mean, and you just and you just know it's tearing your stuff up. Yeah. And then when we get to where we're at, before we open the door, we're like, what do you think yeah. broke, got rearranged, fell off before we open the store? Let's yeah. play a game and so i would say you know a lot of people blame the manufacturers for for shoddy you know cheap workmanship build, and craftsmanship you know. but the roads have the play roads a are, big factor in it and now there's yeah. rv industry needs to do better yeah with so their quality but the roads, the roads is the a, it's a big system. you can't expect to go five years bouncing down these roads and not have any issues issue. yeah and yeah you could take back roads country roads may take you a little longer yeah i was always scared but, of that because the problem is, is if you break down you might not have cell reception there yeah. might not be a good spot to turn to pull off the road mm-hmm. and you just don't want to get trapped or stuck somewhere yeah, where you don't have access sometimes your gps says you're good to go and you're not yeah it lies clearance wise so it lies when you get off mainstream roads, we get very nervous. Yeah, so I just kind of stuck to whatever the RV GPS told me to do. I didn't yeah. didn't cut my own path. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So anyway, there's our ten things that we hated the most about RV life. Uh, leave us a comment. Let us know what yeah. you hate about it if you're out there on the road. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that a lot of yours will be the same as ours. But if you have something that maybe we didn't think about, leave us a comment. Let us yeah. know. Um, there's a lot more. The oh, yeah, little we petty could've... stuff. But this yeah. was the Big Ten. You would be getting nitpicky on yeah. some stuff that you hate. And we would, we didn't want this video to make it sound like we hated RV life. No. Because we loved, we loved it. Yeah. And it was a good time. So maybe we'll do a video about all the things that we loved, we loved. about okay. RV life. I'm down. All right. I already got the list going. <laughs> okay. Because I'm missing it right now. <laughs> it's, it's still fresh. It is. We've been here, what, three months now? Yeah. But it's still fresh. Fresh. It is. I miss it. That that pull. It is. And and you feel somewhat disconnected. You get so used to moving every week or two or three, and now you've been here for three months, four months. And like, that's why wow. we love the lifestyle so much. Yeah. You new know, because new stuff keeps it fresh and exciting. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, let's do that video. All right. <laughs> and hey, stick around for just a few seconds. We're gonna honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans, everything you need to know is right down in the description of the video. Appreciate you watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye.